So over the past six years, I have tried numerous side hustles from flipping items on Facebook Marketplace to crypto investing, selling Instagram growth services, drop shipping, opening my own Shopify store, content creation. And today I'm ranking the best to worst side hustles using this tier list. At the end, I'll choose one as S plus, the best, and the worst F minus, the worst. Now, don't forget to uh, hit that like and subscribe button if you find this helpful. All right, first side hustle, Facebook Marketplace. Let's start with flipping items on Facebook Marketplace. This was one of the first things I tried when I wanted to make money online independently. Buying and selling on Facebook Marketplace can be very profitable, especially if you focus on a specific product and understand its market. For instance, watches. If you know you have the market, if you know the market of watches and you have money to invest, you could spot a good deal, buy watches, list them for higher price and make profit. People do this with collectibles like Pokemon cards, vintage items, Star Wars figures, even cars baseball cards. Facebook Marketplace also has a section for free items where they give items away for free, 20 to $30, or and you can sell them for even more. So there's a small, so make sure you check that out as well. The downside of Facebook Marketplace, it's not entirely scalable. You're a one person operation, limited by the speed at which you can buy and sell items. Negotiating deals, meeting up, collecting items, relisting them can sometimes take weeks. So while it can be profitable, especially if you find a niche or free items to sell at a profit, it isn't completely scalable. For that reason, I'll place the Facebook Marketplace in around a B score. Okay, next up, next side hustle, Uber. First, you need a car and you must be willing to drive strangers around, possibly risking wear and tear on your vehicle. You'll also have expenses like gas, insurance, car payments. As a driver, you're limited by how many rides you can do at a time, usually making around $15 to $22 an hour, maybe up to $30 an hour in the busier areas like Manhattan, especially if you have a black SUV, where customers will often pay more. However, Uber isn't scalable, so I'm placing it in a D score, okay? A being the best, F being the worst. Next is Shopify. Let's talk about Shopify and creating your own online store. This can be very broad. You can start a clothing brand, a drop shipping store with products from Alibaba or AliExpress or offer services. Some people make millions on Shopify while others make nothing. So success depends on the product or service and how it's marketed. For example, if you're selling skincare product, and marketing it through TikTok videos that you link to your store, you could see significant traffic and sales. I've personally made money on Shopify through dropshipping by selling my own products and supplements and fitness items, which I marketed on social media. Shopify can be highly lucrative if done right. So I'll rank it at an A tier, but the key word is done right. Okay, next. If you haven't heard of School, it's spelled S-K-O-O-L. It's a subscription-based platform where you can host your own paid community, giving members access to your courses, resources, and programs. You can make money on School in two ways, okay? The first, as a creator or an operator. And this, sorry, the first way is a creator. The second way is an operator. So as a creator, you can host your own community and charge a monthly fee anywhere from 10 to thousands of dollars. In my case, I run a community called the S class where I provide fitness programs, weekly calls and social skill courses. Alternatively, as an operator, you don't need a social media presence. Instead, you can approach creators, offer to set up their communities, handle all the back end work and take a percentage of the revenue. Usually 30% is about there. School is scalable because you can host thousands of members in one community, making it a both low cost and highly scalable. So I place school in the S tier, the best, okay? Next, we have TikTok, where there are several ways to make money. For example, TikTok Creativity Fund pays you thousands, pays you per thousand views, ranging from two to four dollars. So if a video goes viral with a million views, you could earn a thousand to four thousand dollars. TikTok Shop is another option if you're in the US, allowing you to promote products in your videos and earn a commission for each sale. For TikTok success, you need to be creative, consistent, and willing to experiment. You also need a niche, such as skincare, fitness, photography, or you know, gardening to build an interested audience. Although TikTok can be lucrative, it's also competitive and requires significant effort. So I'll rank it in the A tier. I've personally done really well on TikTok. TikTok is one of my all time favorites. Next favorite of mine is Fiverr, a marketplace for digital services like photo editing, video editing, website design. Fiverr can be highly lucrative 
especially if you have good client portfolio and the positive reviews, which boosts your ranking on the platform. And once you're established, people searching for your services like YouTube video editing will find you at the top and it'll lead to more sales. However, as a freelancer, you can only handle so much work. So there's competition, right? And depending on your rates and you're limited to one project at a time, while you can make excellent money if you're skilled and build credibility, it's not the most scalable. So I'll place this in the like A minus the B score. Fiverr has been all one of my favorite. Okay, next, drop shipping. Now, next with AliExpress drop shipping, if you find a unique product with low competition and high demand, you can sell it at a markup through Shopify store, <coughs> promoting it on TikTok or with Facebook ads. AliExpress offers drop shipping friendly products, but you can't customize or add your branding, make it a, making it a challenge to differentiate your brand, your brand from others. So AliExpress drop shipping is profitable if done right, but isn't highly scalable. So if you're limited to it's because you're limited to the product's quality and lack of branding control. For that reason, I'm ranking it at around a C. Okay. However, drop shipping with Alibaba <coughs> is slightly different. Drop shipping with Alibaba differs from Express as you can connect with suppliers to customize your products with your brand. You can negotiate deals for bulk purchases you, and create branded items, making this more scalable. For example, Manscaped, ever heard of that? A well-known men's grooming brand started by dropshipping razors. And then as they grew, they brought manufacturing in-house, building a massive brand. So with Alibaba, you can create a scalable business, though it requires uh, upfront investment. So I'll place it in the B score. Okay, online surveys. Now, um, you've probably heard of this before, where they say, hey, complete this survey and we'll pay you money. Sounds low risk, low effort, and they're guaranteeing you money. Well, here's how it really works. Companies and brands reach out to these online survey companies saying, hey, we want you to collect data and information about our product or service. So get a lot of people to take our survey, then complete the survey company. Then the survey company turns to people and says, hey, we'll pay you X amount of money if you can complete this survey. However, it's usually 10 cents to $3 a survey, and it can take up to an hour. And sometimes they also add conditions like requiring you to complete a certain number of surveys within one day or you don't get paid. So they demand a lot of your time without rewarding you as much as nearly you'd expect. So general rule to follow, whenever you a company promises low effort, low risk and high reward, you usually won't see the high reward. So I'm putting the online surveys at a F score. Okay, next, we got DoorDash. I like this better than Uber because well, first, you're driving your own car, but not with strangers. There's less risk of your car getting dirty or damaged. And if you live in a busy area, you can do it with a bike or even an e-bike. Uh, in places like downtown Toronto or Manhattan, you can quickly pick up and deliver orders without getting huge gas costs. On average, DoorDash pays around $15 to $25 per hour and often has a base pay incentive. So because of this, I'm placing DoorDash in a B score above Uber. Now let's talk about Bitcoin in cryptocurrency. Now personally, I've made good money with cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin, and I've been invested since 2020, simply holding onto it. No active training, no mean coins, just an early Bitcoin investment, and I do dollar cost averaging, meaning I just buy a little bit each week since 2020. So however, cryptocurrency is volatile and you have to be prepared to see your money go up and down, especially if you're holding it long term. You must be okay with potential losses and confident it will eventually recover. Secondly, you need capital to invest. So in my opinion, actively trading or buying memes is way riskier. And while there's high reward potential, the risk is equally high. So if you plan to invest in popular cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, just hold. That's the safer route for me anyway, and that's what I recommend. I know the word safe and crypto don't always fit together, but I do believe it's the future and I rank investing in crypto at a C. Next is video editing, okay? Using Premiere Pro or CapCut or another editing tool, uh, finding your own clients and having them pay you to edit their videos can be profitable. My editor works directly with me, no third party like Fiverr, so he keeps 100% of his profits. However, you need to find your own clients with third party platforms like Fiverr, People come looking for services, but when you're on your own, you need to track clients or build a strong portfolio for referrals. So if you can do this, it's profitable and scalable. As your client base grows, you can even hire another editor. So 
I place video editing in the A score. Okay, now this one, you might be surprised, this next one. But we next we have YouTube, uh, which can be highly profitable, especially if your videos get views. And many people think it requires crazy creativity or editing skills, but plenty of channels are faceless and focus on simple commentaries or memes or Reddit stories racking up views. So with YouTube shorts, you don't even have to do long form videos to earn money. I know people who started less than a year ago and now have over 100,000 subscribers and you can do full YouTube full time. You don't need um, fancy equipment. You don't need to show your face. Just create content people want to watch. This could be narrating stories, discussing trending topics, exploring niche areas like stocks, fitness, Japanese anime. You could also sell products like Shopify store or promote it through YouTube, add channel memberships for exclusive features or make money by clipping content from popular shows or podcasts, posting them as shorts. Many podcast creators welcome this because it drives traffic to their original content. Now YouTube has minimal upfront costs, high scalability. So I'm putting it in the S tier, the best side hustle you can have. Next, we have Sweatcoin, which pays you for walking. Sweatcoin gives you 0.95 Sweatcoins for every thousand steps. It sounds like free money, but really, Sweatcoin just partners with companies to promote their product, service, or brand. So you earn Sweatcoins, but you can't redeem them for cash. You only can get rewards from the partners, like gift cards. So Sweatcoin is going in the F tier. <sighs> and finally, the last one is Instacart, where you grocery shop for people based on their uploaded list. So you go to the store, gather items, deliver them, and get paid. And it's a solid way to earn money, and you can make 10 to $20 per hour, sometimes up to 25 depending on your efficiency and order volume. A friend of mine uh, at the gym mentioned he does Instacart full-time. It gets paid fairly well because there's no expense on your, your end beyond the effort and time. So I'll place it in the B score. Okay, next is investing like Warren Buffett investing and investing in the stock market, particularly in the index funds or the S&P 500 is one of the best long-term strategies if you have extra money and you don't need it immediately. These funds historically yield a 10 to 20% annual return. For example, the S&P 500 went up 38% in a year, meaning if you invested $10,000, you'd have $3,800 without any extra work. Now, the, while the market can fluctuate, the economy generally trends up over the five to 10 years, making it a good idea for young investors with extra funds, I'll place uh, investing in the S tier. Now, this comes with a caveat. The best way I think to invest is dollar cost averaging. So buying a little bit every week for the long term. So that way you get all the lows, you get all the highs, and you put it in something that follows the S&P. Okay, next we have day trading. It can be profitable, but it's also risky. In day trading, you buy low, sell high, or short it and do the reverse. But as they say in the Wolf of Wall Street, the stock could go up, down, or in circles. And successful day traders often make money by selling courses or letting others follow their trades in Discord groups. But it's close to gambling, so I'll rank day trading in the D score. Okay, lastly, eh, lawn mowing. If you have a lawnmower and you can go door to door offering a mow, um, offering mow lawn, offering to mow lawns for around $20, uh, it's a good side hustle, but it's hard to scale. So if you get a few clients, you can make $60 a day, maybe more depending on your area, but you'll need to be willing to move around and you'll, you'll need to know how to cut grass and talk to people. And for that reason, I'll put it about a C score. Now, for our, my top picks and bottom picks, at the very bottom, F minus, I have sweat coins since it doesn't actually pay money. It markets itself as easy money, but it's essentially just promoting other companies. So. And for the best side hustle, S+, I'm putting YouTube as it requires no upfront costs, it's only consistency and effort, and the potential earnings from views and various monetization options are excellent, including affiliate marketing. So that's why YouTube holds the crown, I think. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you uh, like, subscribe, follow for the next one. If you have any questions, you can message me. I read all my messages. And um, if you want more side hustle ideas, I do have a 54 side hustles dossier. You can go to my profile, download it, and I've tested 54 side hustles and documented it on a video. So it should give you, I'm sure you can find a good side hustle that would suit you if you read that dossier. So thanks for joining guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye for now.